I invite you to join me in our responsive call to worship. Come one and all to meet God here. Our only hope is in the maker of heaven and earth. Come all who are weary and oppressed. God hears our prayers and answers us. Come together to sing songs of praise to God. God's glory abides in this place of worship. God's presence and help are real. In our unison prayer of invocation, may all your people find favor with you this day, God of majesty and power. Turn our sorrow into gladness. Lift us from our daily preoccupation that we may pray with earnest intent, both to thank you and to be changed by you. Let our prayers be powerful and effective. May our worship be alive and life-changing. May the service we extend find favor in your eyes. Amen. Opening hymn is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Hear this call to confession. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so we might be healed. Prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. We seek that right relationship with God that empowers our prayers and our service. Join me in our prayer of confession. Compassionate and merciful God, in our worst moments, we despise ourselves. We know what is right, but we fail to do it. We are easily deceived by voices other than your own. When we seek your face, our vision is clouded by self-concern. When we intend to do your will, easier paths beckon, and we follow them. Forgive us, God, as we repent in dust and ashes. Save us from ourselves, that we might bear Christ's name with renewed confidence. Hear our silent prayers brought to your throne of grace.
Join me as we share with one another the assurance of our forgiveness. The snares that entrap us are broken. Our help is in the name of God who made heaven and earth. Prayers of the faithful make a difference. They are powerful and effective. We are changed in the hands of a loving God. We have much to give, beginning with the simplest of gifts. Let a cup of cold water offer to one who is thirsty. Praise God who is transforming us. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over us. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing to your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, beginning in the 38th verse. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If because of... It is better for you to enter life marred then with two hands and go to hell where the fire never goes out. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God, of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. May God's blessing this day be upon the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. Let us pray. Lord God, you have brought us together in the beauty of your creation today. Thank you for each one joining us for worship. Each one of us, special and unique, created in your image, to be disciples for you and your world. We thank you for this congregation, its long story history. And today we, we dedicate our building, a renovated building, for your continued work and ministry in this community. And we pray that all of us who are hearing this message today, all of us, Lord God, will be inspired to service for you. In your name, amen. In our gospel text today, from the gospel of Mark, stumbling, stumbling, stumbling is spoken about a couple of times. It says we should not create stumbling blocks for others. We should not be stumbling blocks. And if something of us is a stumbling block to our faith, some pretty dramatic, dramatic uh, measures are spoken of. Cut it off. Pluck it out. Those are dramatic things to do if our things of our bodies, appendages of our bodies are causing us to sin. 
But Jesus is speaking, and he's, the text I read says about hell, but in, in, the, in the text it says Gehenna. Jesus was speaking to that crowd of people about sin, and he was telling them very clearly that there is a place just outside of Jerusalem, it was the garbage dump, where the trash would be burned, and where stuff was dumped, household trash. It was always smoldering, and it was also infested with worms, eating the garbage, eating the, the decayed stuff that was there. And so the people, as he spoke to them that day, he says in verse 43, if your hand calls you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to, it says hell, but Gehenna. So they, they knew what he was talking about. That place just outside Jerusalem where always smoldering, stinky, stench, worm infested. That's also the way we view hell. Always smoldering, always hot, stinky, bad place. Don't want to be there. Jesus is speaking about sin and causing others to fall into sin and ourselves falling into sin, stumbling into sin. Now I thought about, you know, dramatically uh, portraying a stumbling. I was going to fall this morning, but now I thought, hey, you, might, you might really hurt yourself. So don't, don't do that. You've all seen people stumble and fall. Perhaps it's happened to you. I sometimes say to the kids if they're, you know, they, they stumble, I say, what, new feet? You just get those? It's happened to you, I'm sure. You, you don't step high enough. You catch your foot on something, and I hope you haven't fallen and hurt yourself. But sometimes we do. We stumble about. This text says we are not to be stumbling blocks for others in their faith, in their faith journey. We're, in other words, we're not to lead others into sin, into a life of sin. So parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, any one of us who have influence over children, we've got to be careful because they're watching and they're learning from us. And we are not to lead them into sin. We should not do things that we don't want them doing down the road because we know they're wrong. Have we done that? Yeah, we've done that. We've said a word not thinking that they're right there and they hear it. Then two weeks later you hear it come out of their mouth. Where'd you learn that? Well, I heard it from you. There's a song about that. You can listen to that on the radio. We are not to be stumbling blocks in our faith for others. Church in Florida. Oftentimes they could have their building windows open. It wasn't raining. Beautiful weather. Every Sunday morning, a teen in this in this neighborhood decided it was a good time to get out his mini bike. And he would ride the mini bike around the church parking lot, revving the motor of the mini bike. People in the congregation are getting very annoyed by this practice. It was happening not just once, but week after week after week. So the pastor had an idea. One Sunday morning, he intercepts the motorbike riding young man in the parking lot. And he said, I'll be in my office tomorrow morning if you'd like to talk. He says, Pastor just had a sense that this kid coming here at this time of the day, riding around there, it was a... It was a cry for help. He wanted to be heard for something by someone. And lo and behold, the young man showed up at the pastor's office the next morning. He showed up. And they had a conversation that led to many more conversations. And not only did this young man become a Christian, he became a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that pastor in that congregation had a choice. As that young man rode around the parking lot, week after week, disrupting their service. They can go out there, and they can reprimand him, they can tell him to stay off, they can call the police. But they didn't. The pastor did. The pastor didn't want to be a stumbling block in this young man's journey of faith. And that's a dramatic story. 
but being a stumbling block in people's lives, we never know when we are being a stumbling block. We never know when we're getting in the way of what God is trying to do in their lives. I believe very strongly that the Holy Spirit is at work in the lives of every person. The Holy Spirit is at work in our lives all the time. And if we don't get on board with the work of that Holy Spirit, then we will sometimes be a stumbling block for the work of that Spirit. But I'll tell you what we will never do. We will never stop the work of the Holy Spirit. We will never be able to stop what is the Spirit's leading. It's been probably 12, 15 years that this congregation embarked on a building project. Some of you weren't here when we began the first discussions about building. Some folks who were here are no longer here. They have gone on to God's kingdom of glory. It was a long journey. I think we had four different plans. The first one, too expensive. Second one, too expensive. Third one, too expensive. But over the course of years, and the Holy Spirit continuing to nudge, eventually we got to the point of having a plan that was not too expensive. That stayed with inside the walls of our building. Because what we learned over time was that all those plans, whenever we went outside the building and started moving dirt, we were paying thousands of dollars just to move dirt and getting nothing for that. So when we went with the final, this, this last plan, the Holy Spirit kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. All the committees got together. They came up with what they needed for the ministries of that committee at this time. We gave those plans to an architect. She did a tremendous job, came back to us with a couple of options of how we could use the current building and its facilities. And I was amazed when she said, and they said, that we could get air conditioning as well as do everything that we wanted to do. I was amazed. I didn't think it was possible. I thought, the air conditioning is going to be another one of those things that will just be out there sometime in the future. But that wasn't the case. Everything that we, the committees wanted at, at the time that we did the renovation, it's all there in the building. It's all there. And then the Holy Spirit, through members of our congregation, spoke to us about, rather than going to an institution, borrow the money, why don't we self-finance? And that went tremendously well. And it's my understanding from the finance committee, from Harley, the treasurer, that at this point in the project, what we owe is $225,000. $850,000, almost, almost $900,000 project. And we owe $225,000. And we're just at one year of the project being done. One year of the project being done. Give yourselves a hand for what you as a congregation have done. Give yourselves a hand. When the Holy Spirit is at work in something, we're not going to stop it. Now, did we have people that were naysayers to the whole building thing? Sure. Sure we did, but the Holy Spirit kept pushing, kept nudging, and it's done. Just a few weeks ago, it was, a, it was not quite this cool, but it was a cooler day. The person that opened the church opened the windows because we didn't need the air conditioning. Then we had somebody tell him, why are we opening the windows? We have air conditioning. Folks. For more than a hundred years, the building didn't have air conditioning. We don't need to use it every Sunday just because we have it now. <laughs> we can let it off when it's a day like this. And we can let the cool air come in. We are blessed. Because the Holy Spirit has nudged and pushed and is working through us. 
You can never stop the work, the working of the Holy Spirit. What happens if we get in the way and become a stumbling block in someone's faith journey or in the life of a congregation? What happens if the Spirit wants something done? The Spirit just eventually just gets tired of trying to nudge you and just goes around you. The Spirit just diverts and makes a new path for what the Spirit wants done. I don't want to be a stumbling block in anyone's faith journey. And I hope you don't either. I hope that when God's calling you to something, you feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit, that you respond affirmatively to that nudge. Even if you're a little unsure, even if you're a little afraid, respond to that nudge. Because if you don't, and the Holy Spirit is directing it, and you keep dragging your feet, being a stumbling block, the Spirit will find another way to get done what the Spirit wants to get done. You're not, we are not going to stop the work of the Holy Spirit. We will not stop that work. So may God help us as we continue to move forward as a church to seek the guidance of that Spirit and to not be stumbling blocks in the way of the Spirit's leading. Whatever the Spirit's calling us to. Let's not be afraid to venture out in new ways to new forms of service and ministry. I'll tell you that the potato field project, this is two years old that we've done that, two years old. And I was thinking... Uh, RJ is going to be away at college next year. I don't know that we should do that again. Because we didn't have a great deal of congregational help this year. But then yesterday I had someone come to me and say, you know, if you do that next year, I think I'll be able to help. Is that the Holy Spirit telling me, don't, don't quit that project? There, it's something to help, something to help our community. Don't quit that project. I take it as that. We've got to always be listening where the Spirit is talking to us. Not an audible booming voice from heaven, but as we listen to each other. The Spirit is speaking because the Spirit is alive and active in our midst. May that Spirit continue to move this congregation forward as it serves in this community and as it serves God's world. Let's not be a stumbling block to the Spirit. Because if we get in the way of the Spirit, the Spirit will find another way to get things done. Amen. Our litany of dedication. Raise your hand if you were here for the whole building project all, all the way through everything since we started to now. Just raise your hand. Yep. Good. We've got a lot of folks. A lot of folks. But not all of you. And I hope that you will find the things that we have done to be blessings for you. I will tell you already, in some funerals that we've had, the capabilities that we have in our, in our sanctuary for the video, the streaming of the, of, the, of the funeral service, it has already been a blessing to people in our community. People that aren't even, they're just kind of vaguely connected to our church, not even members. But they've been blessed by, by what we have done over there. Keep that in mind as we share this litany of dedication. Yes, we're here now. We're here occupying this building now, but none of us were here 100 years ago or 278 years ago when the church began. None of us were here then. And none of us will be here 80 to 100 years from now. But my prayer and my hope is that this building and the ministries of this congregation are continuing we're just doing our part as stewards right now to continue the work of God. We were not and will not be 
stumbling blocks to that work. Join me in this litany of dedication. We're reminded why we got out of here last fall about this time, as the, as the nuts are falling from the tree. Put your hard hat on. For the worship of God in prayer and praise, for the preaching of the word, for the celebration of the holy sacraments, we rededicate this building. For the comfort of those who mourn, for the help of those who are perplexed, for the guidance of those who seek strength, we rededicate this building. For the support and nurture of families, for the guidance of children, for the calling of youth to a life of service, we rededicate this building. For guarding against evil, for fostering faithfulness, for promoting peace and justice in all the earth, we rededicate this building. For the opening of minds to your truth, for the care of the needy, for the giving of hope and courage, we rededicate this building. For the unity of all believers in Christ, for the carrying of the gospel into all the world, for the furtherance of the unity of all people, we rededicate this building. For the consecration of life and service, for grateful remembrance of those who have gone before us, and in gratitude for our life together in this church, we rededicate this building to the glory of God, to the honor of Jesus Christ, and to the praise of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we offer thanksgiving and praise to you on this festive day. We give you thanks for those who responded to your call to establish this church 278 years ago. We acknowledge our gratitude for the continuing ministry and mission of our church through the years. We thank you for all the church has meant to its members, to those in ministry has touched, and to the United Church of Christ. In tender memory, we rejoice at the inspiration which has been founded here for the preaching of your word, for the singing of hymns to your praise, through the sharing of life-sustaining sacraments. Look upon us this day with mercy. Bless us as we reconsecrate ourselves to you. Sanctify our lives and our work through this church. Help us to preserve the best of our past, to be open to new vision. May this local church continue to be a sign of your spirit and a witness to Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.